see her set her doubt in the palace. And Adamus came unto him, saying, Thou also was with Jesus of Galilee. But he denied before them all, saying, I know not what thou sayest. And when he was gone out into his porch, another maid saw him, and said unto them, That that were, were there, this fellow was also with Jesus of Nazareth. And again, he denied with the note, I do not know the man. <coughs> and after a while came unto him, they that stood by and said to him, Surely thou also art one of them. Right. For the speech be weary thee. Then became he to curse and to swear, saying, I know not the man. And immediately, the yeah. cock crew. Yeah. And Peter remembered the word of Jesus, which said unto him, Before the cock crow, right. thou shalt deny me priests. And he went out and wept bitterly. Yeah. You may be seated. My subject today is why deny Christ? Why deny Christ? Why? 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 Uh, my definition for deny from the Merriam-Webster dictionary it says by refusing to omit the truth or reality of something unpleasant. Yes, sir. Like a patient in denial about his health problem. Yes, sir. We all been in denial. Yes, sir. In some way or another. It could be what you eat. You know you have high blood pressure, but you still eat poor. You are in denial. You know you have diabetes, but you keep eating chocolate cake and blueberry ice cream. You're in denial. When you know your child is bad, because he's bad at home, you're in denial. Luke 9, chapter 23rd, verse says, Whosoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. Why deny Christ? Jesus is denied three times by his most faithful disciple. All four of the gospel writers in the Bible recount this episode. Matthews choose to rely relate all three of Peter the Nile together in his gospel, though they took place at different times during the evening. You can see John the 16th chapter, the 16th verse. You can see Luke the 27th chapter, the 5th and 8th verse. Remember that Peter was pretty much Jesus' right-hand man. Nearly always with him, as he ministered. Mm -hmm. Peter was with Jesus when he walked on water. Right. Peter was with, with Jesus during his early ministry. Yeah. Uh -huh. yes, sir. Peter was with Jesus when he fed 3,000. Yeah. Well, well. When he yeah. fed 5,000, including the women and the children. Right. Yeah. Peter was with Jesus when he healed the blind. 
Peter was with Jesus when he lived on the sea. Peter. Remember that Peter was, was pretty much Jesus' right hand man. Nearly always with him as he missed. Those who saw Jesus probably saw Peter with him. Peter's sin of the nine Christ did not occur spontaneous out of the blue as we look back at Matthew's account of the event. Of the evening of Jesus and even earlier event, we can see things that Peter did yeah. and said yeah. that led up to his denial of Christ. Yeah. Yeah. We're not going to be too hard on Peter, but we can learn a lesson from Peter. For instance, when Jesus first laid out to the disciples, God plan of Jesus' suffering, denying and being raised to life, Peter responded by rebuking his word, saying, never, Lord, this shall never happen to you. It comes from Matthew 16, 27, chapter. Peter clearly uh, did not fully accept God's plan that Christ would suffer and die for mankind. Yes. This is also re reflected by Peter pulling his sword in an attempt to present the arrest of Jesus. Another indication in Peter's behavior is that led up to us the nine Christ was in overconfidence yeah. concerning his totally to Jesus. Earlier in the evening when Jesus predicted that all of the disciples would fall away, Peter rather than carefully considering what Jesus was saying and possibly answered, even if all fall away, on account of you, I never will. Peter, the bold, venturous, straightforward disciple, fell by cow cowardly act and lying. We can all, of course, learn from the path that Peter took, which led to his great sin. We must seek to understand our own weakness. We must verily seek God in prayer for guidance and strength, yeah. especially when momentous events are about to occur. Yeah. Our, our important decisions need to be made. Yeah. It is significant that all four Gospels relate the episode where one of the Christian religious heroes experienced a major fall into sin. This is not the first time yeah, yeah. in the Bible yeah, right. where the weakness and even major sins of his heroes are related to us. Right. We are told of David, yeah. descent into adultery and even murder yeah. as he tried to cover his sin of adultery. Right. We are told to Solomon descent into Idolatry and lavishness living. All right. Yes, Peter, by the grace of God, yes. went to greater and better things. Yes, sir. Yes. We must all remember and learn from this those godly men and women who stumble into sin can and will be forgiven All right. All right. by God. They must also be forgiven by man and be allowed by man as they are allowed by God to greatly serve God even after serious sin. Let us mark this history and store it up in our mind. It teaches us plainly that the best of saints are only men and men encompass with many infirmities. 
A man may be converted to God, has faith yeah. and hope yeah. and love toward Christ, and yet be overtaken in a fire, and have awful power. He shows us the necessity of humility. So long as we are in the body, we are in danger. The flesh is weak, and the devil is active. We must never think, I cannot follow. It points out to us the very of char charity towards early saints. We must remember Peter and restore them in the spirit of meekness. Sadly, these days, though the religions we profess is based on forgiveness, we are very slow to forgive. Men of God, for significant sins, those who have sinned, even significantly, can be restored by God forgiveness and can be and can be still mightily used for his purpose. We must remember this and not be an obstacle to the work that God wants to do in the life of a sinner. Now let's talk about some, some ways we deny God. Ways we deny God. Have you denied the God of the universe? Believe it or not, this is an important question for all of us to think about. It's clear in scripture that eternal life is freely given to those who trust God and believe those who trust God and believe his good news and just judgment is carried out on those who deny him. But there is more than one way to deny God. There are three that I found in the New Testament. Denying that Jesus is who he said he was. That's in 1 John 7, 22 and 23. Tell us who is the lie, but he who denied that Jesus is the Christ. That is the Antichrist, or who denies the Father and the Son. No one denies the Son hath the Father. Whoever confesses the Son has the Father also. Not acknowledging Jesus before others. That's found in Matthew 10, 32, 33. Jesus, so everyone who acknowledges me before men, I also will acknowledge them before my Father, who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. Hypocrisy, Titus 1st chapter 16 says that they profess to know God, but they deny him by their works. Your words may acknowledge Jesus, but do you do your works deny him? Are you loving others that don't love you? That are God in love, that are unconditional love. Are you obeying him? John 14, 15. Are you bearing fruits? Are you sacrificially giving yourself and your resource to others? Are you seeking God in his word? Many of us will look at these points and see some of ourselves in one of all of, of, of them. If you do feel shame because of the way you deny him, there is good news. Even denial of God was paid for at the cross. By Jesus, as we see so clearly with people. If you turn from that sin of denial and receive Jesus by faith, that sin will be forgiven. Yeah. Keep trusting Christ. Yeah. Other ways that we deny Christ, we fail to regularly read our Bible. 
We do not accept him as our Lord and Savior. We did not live like we accepted him as our Lord and Savior. We have a job and do not start weekly Bible study. We don't, even, we don't invite our neighbors to church. We don't serve at church. We don't pay, we don't pray for others. Jesus was not a man. We think the way we have lived is enough. We don't even pay our time. We believe there are shades of gray in our faith walk. Peter, later on, after the denial and resurrection of Jesus, would preach Jesus on the day of Pentecost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 3,000 souls would be saved. And he wrote two books, 1 Peter and 2 Peter. This is what we should be doing, church, seeking those that are lost and telling the good news that our Lord and Savior still lives in spirit and in truth. In the year of 2019, if I was you, I would not deny Christ. Why deny Christ when he woke you up this morning? Been good to you. Started you on your way. Closed you in your right mind. Gave you the activity of your limbs. We have food and shelter. Clothes on our back. He healed our body. He delivered us. He protected us from seen and unseen danger. Why deny a God like that? Then he died for us on the cross. Hung led for over for our sin, for the sin of the world. But early that bright Sunday morning, he rose with all power, all power in his hand. Now we have a Savior in heaven, interceding on our behalf, praying to the Father for us, that we may have eternal life. In 2019, God wants to bless you the most. He wants to use you in a mighty way. Your future is better than your past. Yes, they marched him from judgment hall to judgment hall. His own denied him. The chief priests denied him. The Roman soldiers denied him. They say, give us Barabbas. Why deny a God like that? But he's coming back for a church without a spot of damage. They crucified him. The crowd denied him. They buried him in the bar tomb. He lay there all night crying. All day Saturday. All night Saturday night. But on that third early Sunday morning, he rose with all power in his hand. Are you glad about it? 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 Say that. Well, all we need to do is do not deny 